This work started off as a premier ranked water zone called Sunstop Fall. And in 2003, they removed the water taking part and used part of the track and then added onto it using SMS track, connecting the two, creating an SMS bond coaster. Like, what the heck? That's so strange. I mean, great use of, you know, what is already there. The whole concept behind the thing is just really strange. You can even see that in the right layout. So let me dive into the slide a bit more so those of you who haven't written this can get a better idea of what this slide experience is like. So you're going to first start by boarding your SNS trains, and these are all very similar SMS, to if you've written an SNS stream and swing. These are essentially the same restraint, but it's on a roller coaster. So already, you know, kind of weird. You slide out of the station and actually go up this like transfer up to the launch track. It literally slides you up and over using this counterweight. It's crazy. It reminds me of how like the Mr. Freeze roller coasters slide you out onto the launch track. This kind of does the same thing. You come to a stop, you're just going to roll back a tiny bit. And then there's this stoplight that goes from red, yellow to green. And you launch out. This is 0 to 53 miles per hour in just over two seconds. So it's a pretty forceful launch. Remember, SNS is the same company that did Dota Donpa, which is the world's fastest acceleration on a roller coaster. I say it's a forceful launch. So I really enjoy that. And you actually go up and over an airtime hill first thing. So again, remember how I said this layout is kind of weird? We first start things off with an airtime hill, and then following it, we have this section that is pretty much all low to the ground, so you really can't get too much footage of it from inside the park. But it's essentially just twisting around low to the ground, and then you actually switch over to the buzzsaw fall section. You can literally see where the track switches over. It is a completely different track style. And I wouldn't say that one style of track is smoother oh, than the everything. other. Like, you won't feel the transition or anything. The transition is done very smoothly, and that section is what leads you into the lift hill. Yes, this coaster has a transfer track, a launch, and a lift hill. The highest point is in the second half of the ride. Like I said, this ride is just weird. Just over 100 feet tall, you go into a turnaround and you're dropped. I'd say it's a decent drop. It's not very steep or anything. And I also wouldn't say that this is one where you really come like soaring out of your seat in like any crazy ejector moment or anything. Probably the most airtime you're going to get on this ride is on that airtime hill after that launch. But after that drop, you actually go into this like bank turnaround and then into the brake run. So that section after the lift hill is rather short in my opinion. Most of the ride is spent from the launch leading up to the lift hill. So if I had one complaint, I would say it would be kind of nice to see it like balanced out a bit more where you see the second half of powder keg like just as long as the first half but also i'm glad that the lift hill and drop is there in the first place because if the ride just ended and didn't have that section with the lift hill or drop then the ride would be like really short so i am glad it's there definitely but i think this is the ride that when you go to silver Isle city definitely make sure to ride it just because it's such a strange experience you know it, like i mentioned at the beginning of the video it's a fun coaster it isn't gonna like blow you away or anything I think it's a pretty cool ride, but it's not one also that I would say would be at the top of many people's bucket list of like rides that they must do or anything, you know. For rides to Civil Rock City that are like that, you go for Outlaw Run or now Time Traveler. Powder Keg almost kind of gets forgotten because now Civil Rock City has that awesome top two. But this ride isn't bad or anything. I think this is going to be a good coaster to start some kids off to, like introduce them to launches. It's not super tall and it doesn't go upside down or anything. It's definitely a thrill coaster, but also I think that this coaster would be better to start kids on before rides like Wildfire or Outlaw Run, or even probably Time Traveler, because I think